the Lord, everybody. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise on today. You're online to the world. Yes, I'm, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I, I, I prayed for this word this week. I believe I said to the pastor, I don't know what kind of food we're going to get on Sunday because I can't come up with anything. But uh, God is faithful. Whenever he decides that I stand here, he always gives me a message. And I was talking with some people, and you know, people kind of pick and choose what they want to follow out of the Word of God. Yes, yes. You know, they got some parts they like, some parts they don't like. I don't like the Old Testament because it's not relevant. I don't like the New Testament. They don't believe that the two go, go together. And everybody has an opinion about it. But the Lord said to me, as he says through his word, let me be true and every man a liar. Yes, he did. Amen. And so that is the title of my message today. Let God be true and every man a liar. All right. And this is a mandate for global evangelism. Yes, it is. Because when we go out and tell the truth about the Lord, we are indeed drawing, drawing people, people to the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm going to read very quickly. Um, the scripture today for those who are listening online, uh, my scripture is taken from 1 John chapter 1, and I'm going to read it all the way through to uh, 1 John chapter 2, the first two verses. It sounds long, but it's only 12 verses. Amen? Amen. Amen. So just bear with me. This is our proclamation. What was said from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have observed and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, that life was revealed, and we have seen it, and we testify and declare it to you. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to continue as soon as this contraption takes me back to where I want to go. That the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us, what we have seen and heard, we also declare to you, so that you may have fellowship along with us, and with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Now, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and there is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we are lying and not practicing the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, mm -hmm. we, have. we have fellowship with one another, yes. and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses, cleanses us from, from all, all sin. <laughs> if we say we have no sin, mm -hmm. we, are we are deceiving ourselves, all right. and the truth is not in us. Oh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm. If we say we do not have any sin, then we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Mm -hmm. Then John goes on and he says, My little children, I am writing you these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word on this morning. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the main idea of my message this morning is going to be that Jesus is our atonement and our advocate who reconciles us to God and sends us out to share the gospel message with the world. Mm -hmm. You might ask, why does the world need a savior? Why do we need an advocate? Why must there be a propitiation? Well, the answer is simple. It's because of sin. sin. Humanity has a sin problem, amen? Right. We might not believe it, but we do. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we might not believe it, but not everybody's going to agree, and that's okay. Obviously, sin is not a popular subject these days. Right. Nobody wants to be called a sinner. Okay. Yeah, some people are ready to fight you if you call them a sinner. Mm -hmm. I'm not a sinner, I'm a good person. But you can be a good person and pardon me, still go and bust hell wide open. Amen? 
Amen? Mm, Jesus. Because mm. you can be a good person and not know Jesus. Uh, and I don't care how good you are. Unless you know Jesus, you're not going. Amen? People will go to all lengths to hide the fact that they're a sinner. They will try to rationalize it or they will deny it. But we must understand that when we deny our sin, we're really calling God a liar. Mm -hmm. We challenge God's word and question his character. When we say sin is not serious, we are saying that Jesus did not need to die. Oh my. The Apostle John has a different understanding. He recognized the danger of calling God a liar and warns his little children to be on alert. Mm -hmm. When we find out what a person believes about Jesus, guess what? We find out what he thinks about, and we find out about his sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Just listen to a person talk sometimes. Tell you a whole lot about who they are and where they are in Christ Jesus, if anywhere at all. Amen? We must think correctly about Jesus, and we must think correctly about sin. When you see sin for what it is, you will immediately see your need for a Savior. Yes. Amen. Yes. You will immediately see your need for an advocate. You will immediately see that you need Christ to stand before God and make atonement for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. You will also avoid the error of calling God a liar. Right. Now, the world must know what God says about himself. Amen. First right. John 1 and 5, 1, 1 and 5 says that this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. This captures what God wants us to understand. John is saying we have a gospel. We have this good news. We have the message that the world needs. When he says we, he's talking about you and I, the believer in Christ, mm -hmm. those of us who have accepted the Lord. Amen. Right. We have the message. Right. Amen. Right. We have a life raft. We got a lifeline for the world. Right. Amen. Right. And so what he is saying is, is that Jesus, the Christ, who is identified as the what was from the beginning. Amen. Right. He's identified as the word of life. He's identified as the eternal life, the father's son, the source of fellowship and the source of our joy. Amen. Right. Amen. This is what God thinks about Jesus Christ. If we have, excuse me, if we have met the Lord in repentance and in faith, guess what? Then we now have a divine assignment to proclaim the gospel with a universal scope. Amen? Right. With a universal scope. All nations. Everybody. Not just your friends, not just your family, but the entire world. Amen? Right. This message is for the whole world. And so with that, we have a gospel message to announce. The gospel message is this, what we have heard. Okay, whatever it is that you have heard from your learning and reading the word and spending time with God, that is the message. Yes. This is the message, what we have heard. And this message should, should still be ringing in our ears. It is a message that we heard from Jesus himself. Right. Amen. Right. It is a message we must continually declare to others. Yes. This message has not changed, no. and brothers and sisters, it's it never will. will. Mm -hmm. God says, I change it not. Amen. Amen. And he watches over his word to perform it. Yes. The fact that God is light shows us the contrast between who God is and what we are without him. Amen. Right. The light appears, this word light, appears 275 times in the Bible. 95 of those times is in the New Testament. God, who is light and gives life, has come to us as the light of the world in his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The apostle saw this and proclaimed it for all the world to hear. Oh. Amen. Now, what we have to do is that we have this basic truth that we need to affirm. Mm -hmm. We are to faithfully proclaim the gospel. So we need to have an understanding of the nature and character of God. Mm. We can't tell people, people about God if we don't know who God is, if we don't know his nature or his character. Amen? Right. So we must know who God is. 
John teaches us that God is light, that God is love, that God is true. And here he writes, God is light and there is no darkness in him. No, none. Amen? None. You understand that means that God can't cast a shadow? Mm. Think about that. Jesus. There's no darkness in him. Every place he goes, there's light. And if you stand in the light of God and you see a shadow, guess what? His light is not in you. Hallelujah God, to God. God. Who? God, I thank you. Mm. John 8 and 12 says this of Jesus. This is Jesus speaking. I love it when Jesus speaks. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Lord, here we see, does not have the slightest hint of darkness or death. Mm. Death is experienced in darkness. Amen. Right. Well, Jesus took care of that for us. The Bible tells us that he, when he ransacked hell, he took the keys. He snatched away any power from the grave. He told death, get on out of here. You can't do nothing. These are my people. Jesus. Amen. Jesus snatched the keys. He turned back and he looked and he said, oh, death, where is your sin? Oh, grave. Oh, grave. Where is your sin? That's why the child of God should have no fear of death. None. We're living now to live again. Right. Amen. Amen. The word declares that before we walk in darkness, in times past, right. we had our conversation there. But he has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous he light. Has brought us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. David said, I was in a pit. Wait. Yes. I was bogged down in the miry clay. Right. But God came and lifted him up. Hallelujah. Oh. Cleansed him with his righteousness. Yeah. My God. Mm. You see, this light that we have, it will lead others to life. Yes. Amen. Right. This light that we have, the light in us, will lead others. You can't save a soul. I'll tell you that right now. No. Don't go out there trying to save anybody. All you need to do is speak the word. The word declares that it is living. It is alive. And once that word is released, the Holy Spirit will make sure that it accomplishes what it's supposed to be. We all are getting in God's way. Amen. Oh, God, God. Oh, God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus proclaimed by those who met him in conversion, which is the new birth, this message. And this message, we must be passionate about sharing it with the world. We who have received the light must be a light. Matthew wrote and said it like this. He says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Amen. You can't be a light and then put your light under a bushel. You can't walk around saying you're a Christian, but nobody sees your light. My God. Amen. My God. Or something happened to you and they say, oh, I didn't know that she was a Christian. Amen. Everybody ought to know you're a Christian. Amen. Oh, Jesus. I tell it all the time. People see me coming, they start trying to get out in the other direction because they don't want to hear it. I'm like, oh, but God will catch you. I'm not chasing you to death. I might not chase you, but God will catch you. Amen. Oh, Lord, here she comes. The Bible thumper. Yes. Till the day I die. Amen. Hallelujah. If you only knew my story, you would understand my praise. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. My God up in here. I don't even want these notes. No. <laughs> but I'm going to stick to them because it's going to help me stay on track. <laughs> this message that we have must become the central intention. Intention, what we mean to do in our lives. We have to intend to take this word that we have, this light, into the dark places. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. The word must know, excuse me, the world must know what God says about sin. Okay, so the world has to know what the Bible says about God, and now the word has to know what the Bible says about sin. Amen? In John 6, 
chapter 1, verses 6 through 10, the Bible says, If we say we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And if we say we have no sin, the word says we are deceiving ourselves. Nothing worse than deceiving yourself. My God. Because you know what you start out doing? First of all, that's a sin. So you start out lying to yourself. Then it's real easy to lie to other people. Then you'll start lying to other people about God. Yeah. So we've got to be careful. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. About not deceiving ourselves into how great a Christian we are. Jesus. Okay? We need to be humble. We can't be going around talking about how holy you are. You know, I talk about the people who they're so holy that they're no earthly good. Mm -hmm. They get up out the bed in the morning and their feet are like this high up off the floor. They're buffering. They wake up speaking in tongues. And mm. So you catch them on a bad day. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Giving you a bird and cursing you out and everything else. Amen. Amen. These, these uber saints, I call them. Oh. <laughs> My word says we all fall down. All right? <laughs> Can't be no Uber saying around me. <laughs> My Lord. And the thing is, when we when we mess up, here's the good thing. God declares in His Word, if we not if I had to take that back. Take that back. When, when we mess up, if we confess our sins, the Word says He is faithful, and He is just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. God takes the dirt. Cleans you off, and he doesn't make you go to the back and start over. He brings you right where you were when you fell down. You know what? Because if he did not, still be way back at the end of the line. Praise God. Look, I, I can tell you some stuff. Now, amen, I'm not talking about years ago. Now, where I mess up. But thanks be to God. He is a forgiving God. Amen. Amen. We see in a real sense then that the essence of sin is us attempting to take the place of God. We want to be in charge. Mm -hmm. Anybody here got control problem? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll do it. I'll do it because you, you're not going to get it right. with people 
if you're the light, but you're telling them something that is off. You cannot. You cannot fellowship with them. John is absolutely correct when he uses the word we here because he's trying to indicate this is for anyone, anywhere, at any time who takes the position. God says that if we do this, we're sinful. We want to say, no, I, I wouldn't sin, or my sin is not as big as that person's sin. There is no measurement of sin when it comes to God. Sin is sin. Amen? Right. There's no such thing as a little white lie. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Amen? In fact, it makes the truth a lie. Or, you, or, or you, you see a pen and you pick it up, oh, I'm just borrowing it. First of all, when you say you just borrowed it, you know you're not bringing it back. So, <laughs> amen? Mm -hmm. so, so again, you're being found out to be a liar. <laughs> amen? Mm -hmm. And this is all of us. You know, so the thing about it is God is not a respectful person, so he includes everybody here, so nobody can feel like they're being picked on. Amen? We all do this. John makes a negative assertion, and then he turns around with a positive observation. If we say that God is our intimate friend and yet walk in darkness, we are liars and do not practice or live out the truth. Our walk brothers and sisters, should be consistent with what we're saying. The word walk here speaks to a continuous and consistent pattern of life. Amen? You can't tell somebody one thing and turn around and do something different and want them to respect what you have said. Amen? I think the old times used to say you got to practice what you preach. Amen? Bless the Lord. So when we walk, we say to others, I know God. But they look at us and they see that our behavior and beliefs contradict our words. Remember, Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. Amen. What kind of fruit are we growing? God says that we have to not deny Jesus. Amen who we all know was God manifest in the flesh. And we have to stop downplaying the seriousness of sin. Amen. When we do that, we are lying to each other about what we believe. Amen. In contrast, we see verse number seven. And it says that if we live our lives in the realm of light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship. That means intimate fellowship, not only with one another, but we have it with God through the blood of Jesus, his son, and it keeps on cleansing us. Amen? Y'all quiet in here. Amen. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> we can't lie to others. We cannot lie to ourselves. Those who live in death and darkness do not just lie to others, but they eventually lie to themselves, becoming self-deceived, as I have already said, and then their internal and spiritual moral compass goes berserk. It just goes haywire. Amen? If you walk around deceiving yourself, believing that you're telling the truth, you eventually get to the place where you believe that lie. Right. <laughs> say, it, say it enough times. Sounds like the truth to you. And then, of course, since it sounds like the truth, you don't mind going out and sharing it with other people. Amen? Right. Infecting the body. In John's second, if we say, statement, he says this. We discover in it what appears to be a claim of sinlessness and no need for the Savior. All right? Mm -hmm. Because his second statement says... Bear with me for a minute. Just want to refresh our memories. Plus, I find that if I repeat the scripture, then you'll know them. So I'm not trying to torture you. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. Um, but, <laughs> but I move on. I can't find that. But his second statement that he's looking at says that it appears to be a claim of sinlessness and no need for the Savior. But John's judgment on this particular thing is quick and pointed. He says that they deceive themselves and the truth is not in them. And he could well be talking to us. Amen. John's message is clear. 
He says, if you say you have no sin, but God says you do, you say you have no need for a savior, but God says you do, then you're calling God a liar. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Then he follows up with the solution. Thank God for solutions. Mm -hmm. John said, but if you find yourself doing this, go before the Lord, confess your sin, because he's faithful and just to forgive you, right. and he will cleanse you From of all, all unrighteousness. Yes. That's one of the most beloved scriptures and the most memorized scriptures in the Bible. Amen. Right. I like this one too. <laughs> Psalms 28 and 13 reminds us that the one who conceals his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses and renounces them will find mercy. Yes, you. Amen. Don't be afraid to tell me. God already knows that you sin anyway. <laughs> but he wants to hear it from your mouth. He wants to know if you recognize that you have sinned. And when you go and you confess that sin, he's there mercifully waiting to forgive you. Amen. Yes. You do not have to jump through any hoops. You don't have to play with some beads. You don't have to have somebody tell you you're absolved. None of that. Amen. Boom, it's done. You get up off your knees walking away, believing you're forgiven. Guess what? If you believe you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That God says he forgives us and casts our sins as far as the east is from the west, that he tosses them into the sea of forgetfulness, but we walk away saying, boy, but that was really bad. How could God forgive me? We don't receive the forgiveness. That's a trick of the enemy. Oh, my. If God says so, you don't need anybody else's follow-up. Amen? No. Amen? You don't need somebody else to say, oh, well, you know what? You really should feel bad. You don't tell them I already prayed. I already talked to God. Thank you. Receive my forgiveness. I'm moving on. Right. Don't allow anybody to make you guilty about anything. Amen. Amen. When we receive that forgiveness, we are healed. Uh, thank if, you, if, Jesus. If God doesn't remember the sin, the God who is in charge of everything, everything. the God who knows everything, and because he's God and he's sovereign, he can take your sin and toss it out the door and never, ever, ever acknowledge remember. it again. Yes. So why do you want to remember it? Right. I remember mine because I use it to testify with. Because I can tell you how dirty, rotten, and low down I was. But it's not because I'm bragging. It's because somebody in that same place where the devil has said to them, you're never going to get out of this pit. I can tell them, oh, yes, you can. Look what he did for me. You can't get so low that God's arm can't reach you. Hallelujah. My God. Don't lie about God, people. If we say we don't sin, then we have made God a liar, and his word is not in us. You can't have six of one and half a dozen of the other. You're either all in or you're all out. That's it. Okay. There's no gray area. You can't be thinking about whether you want to follow God. Amen? My two sisters this morning made a commitment they said, yes, I will follow Christ, period. There were no butt clauses that were read to you while you were up here. You didn't make any confession that said, well, but if I'm having a bad day, it's all right for me to cuss out the lady over there. You didn't say that. You said, I accept him. And when you accept him, you don't accept part. You accept the entirety of who he is. Amen? And if he says you belong to him, and when you sin, you have an advocate, you better step up and be forgiven. Amen? Get what God promised you. He's not an Indian giver. I know that for a fact. Amen? I'm sorry I don't want to be offensive. That's all. She's a Christian, though. She's a good Wait, and I'm not talking about my other Indian sister in the back, too. Yeah. You all, I didn't mean to be offensive. But God doesn't give you something to take it back. <laughs> Woo! I see, I need this mercy right now. <laughs> you know I love you. I love you with all this in me, all the Christ is in me. Amen. So that was not meant to be any kind of, no. you know. Um, <laughs> hey, we say it too. Hey, <laughs> hey, 
Amen. <laughs> Praise God. John is very simply saying to us, if you lie to others, if you lie to yourself, the next thing you know, you'll be lying to God and you'll be lying about him. My God. Amen. In fact, you will be calling God a liar. Now, his third, if we say statement, says we claim to be right with God, to believe the truth, and to live without sin. Well, John says this, you are twice wrong if you believe that. Okay? Twice. twice wrong. He said, first, we make God a liar because he says we are sinners. Period. Done deal. We are sinners. We have a sin nature. We are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Nobody is born innocent because of Adam. He messed up. They always want to blame it on Eve, but she didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> you tell him, Bishop. She didn't do it. No. It, was, it was him. He was too busy off doing something else to watch what was going on when the serpent came up to her. Yeah. Like, okay. And then she got tricked and turned around and said, my husband, you have something. He was like, oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> and then when God caught him, he going to turn around and tell God, but it's the woman you, you did. did. Pass the blame, man. I wouldn't have did it if she didn't get it. <laughs> you didn't listen any other time, but you picked this day to listen to what I had to say. Yeah, yeah. My Lord, help me up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So, second thing, he says, God's word <clears throat> is not in those who claim they don't have a sin problem. God says we are sinners in need of a savior. See, it's false teachers that tell you that you're not a sinner. Not a sinner. It's false teachers that tell you after you go down in the water of baptisms and accept Jesus Christ that you're no longer a sinner. That's not what the word says. No, no. The word says that, that Jesus paid the price for your sin, but that was like putting it on credit, right, Jerry? Oh. It's on credit. So every time you mess up, you go and you get your credit and put it on that sin, amen, because Jesus paid for it. You're going to sin every day, or we wouldn't need 1 John 1 and 9. You're right. right. Amen. I tell it all the time, so I got to tell it to the visitors. I ask God for grace and mercy. The Bible says that he is faithful and he will give me brand new mercies every day. Well, let me tell you something. At 1159, I need my new mercies. Because I have exhausted every bit of mercy that God gave me. Okay, so I sometimes have to go to sleep when I tell you about 8 o'clock. Because yes. I'm three hours short sure. on mercy. I got to go lay down so, so I don't mess up. Because you can't borrow on tomorrow's, amen. But for today is for today. And sometimes I use it all up before midnight. No. Woo. God says that these are false teachers that teach us this. Now, who are you going to believe? You going to believe them or you going to believe God? The world has to know what God says about Jesus, brothers and sisters. This Jesus that we speak about is the Jesus of the cross. Now, he might not be the Jesus that makes everybody comfortable. You ever find that you rarely hear people mention the name yeah. of Jesus? Yeah. Oh, they will say, God, 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 God. But the, the few of us that know know that the power is in the name. Yeah. Amen. If you want some power, you got to say the name of Jesus. Jesus. Because yeah. there's a lot of gods out here. Amen. It's a lot of little G gods out here. Some people make their jobs their gods. Some people make money their jobs. Some people make their spouse their gods. Somebody make shoes their god. There's lots of gods. But there's only one Jesus Christ who died for this world to cleanse our sins. Amen. And so don't feel uncomfortable talking and saying the name of Jesus because it is power. Amen. He is our advocate. John uses the phrase in the, in the verse where he says, my little children, because he sees the people that he is talking to, including us, as his children in the gospel. Amen. He sees himself as a spiritual father. So John says, as a spiritual father, I'm writing to you these things so that you may not sin. John has made it clear that in this life we cannot be sinless, but because we believe we can be sinless. Y'all catch that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't be sinless, but we can be sinless. We can sin less than we do because it's very hard to sin while you're calling on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. When you're calling, mm, never mind, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm going to stay right, <laughs> right where I am, praise God. But it's hard to sin when you're in prayer. 
it's hard to sin when you're in the presence of God. And so anytime you find yourself being taken off the path, just say a quick prayer. You don't have to stop and get down on your knees and close your eyes and all of that. No, just say a quick prayer from your spirit, from your heart. And it'll help you keep your mouth closed in a situation where you want to open up your mouth and let people have it. Amen. <laughs> Now, we, have, we, we know that God sent Jesus to be our advocate, and yet we still sin. And we we're, going, we're going to continue to sin until we are glorified. So then, what do we do when we sin? Go back to verse 9. When we get to verse number uh, 1 in chapter 2, John tells us that we must flee to Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who is our advocate with the Father. This advocate that we have is sinless and undefiled and spotless. There is no one like him. Amen. All right. The word advocate here means helper. One who is called to come alongside of in time of need. Oh, I'm glad I can call him. He's my helper. Yes, Amen. He, Amen. he helps us when we sin. He cleanses us when we sin. He forgives us when we sin. No sin, brothers and sisters, can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, Jesus, our Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. No sin. No. God said you can't, nobody can pluck us out of his hand. In the Old Testament, it says that God has our names tattooed. Tattooed in the palm of his hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, I have a tattoo and I know I can't just snatch it off. Amen. <laughs> God has your name written in his hand. Amen. Jesus is indeed our atonement and he himself is the propitiation. I know that's a big word for our sin. Not only for ours, but for the entire world. John informs us why Jesus can be our advocate. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> Pastor said, look, he got to get his spot on the video this week. <laughs> this week. I'm, Brother Jerry, can you do me a favor, please? Can you just hang in that bottle of water and be like super duper parched? Um, Jesus was made, thank you, a propitiation or an atonement for our sins. The word propitiation carries with it the idea of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. In other words, Jesus on the cross satisfied the payment for our sin. Do you know how he was tortured? Do you know everything that he went through? The wrath of God was poured out on him. That was for us. Yes. That was for every single one of us. But God said, I love them too much. I don't want to do that to them. And so, God wrapped himself in flesh, was born of a woman, and when he got to age 30, he started his ministry, and at age 33 and a half, he died and hung on the cross for us, because we could not have paid the debt that we owed the Lord. Amen? All right. we, we could not have paid it, so Jesus paid it all. He was made the propitiation. Jesus Christ, by his bloody sacrifice on the cross, satisfied God's holiness and he turned away God's righteousness of wrath for sinners. We got all kinds of stuff going on now. We got babies and puppies. We got another four. This is the church for everybody. Amen. Bring your dog, bring your cat. Come on, just come, just come. Amen. We got another Thor here. <laughs> Just come on. We don't, we, we don't keep anybody from coming. Listen, if you can't come because you don't want to leave your dog at home, bring the dog. Amen. Okay, so that can't be your excuse. Yeah. <laughs> your pet cannot be your excuse. You got to come up with a different one if, if you want to tell us you can't come. Amen. All right. The wrath that should have been poured out on us, brothers and sisters, was poured out on Jesus. The judgment that we should have experienced as sinners, Jesus took for us. The hell that should have been our experience, Jesus took. Amen. Jesus literally went to the depths of hell for us. Amen. Now, all of this was done. Two minutes. Watch this. All of this was done to accomplish God's purpose. 2 Corinthians 5.19 reveals that through this propitiation in Christ, God was reconciling the world back to himself. Amen. 
The work of atonement accomplished by Jesus on the cross is where God's holiness and God's love met. Where God's judgment and God's mercy kissed. Isaiah 53 and 10 says, it pleased the Father to bruise, to bruise him, to put him to grief. But in Philippians 2 and 9, we read that the Father is pleased and he has given him a name which is highly exalted. It is the name that is above every name. Amen. Amen. The word tells us if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, Speaking. he will be the one to lift Thank us God. up. Amen. Yes, he did. The word. You don't have to worry about making a name for yourself. Right. And don't let somebody give you a name. Right. Because if they give it to you, they can take it back. Yes. When God gives you a name, can nobody take it back. Mm -hmm. You know what name God has given each and every one of us? We all got the same name. Okay. Our name is forgiven. forgiven. Our name is forgiven. Amen. 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 So we have to remember then that there is a universal component to this atoning work that Jesus did. It is for the sins of the world. That means that nobody is beyond the reach of the word of God. And so we need to thank the Lord that the light has not gone out, but the light is in each and every one of us. The light that he made manifest in Christ, we now carry. So let us run with this light, and let us take this light into a dark and dying world. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.